Greetings once again from Rescue Shuttle Control. Today's session will be a little different than most because today we're not going to focus very much on hardware, although we will be using the uh, display hardware that we learned about in our previous session. But the focus today will be continuing our emphasis on security. We have some very important and sensitive information that we want to convey to you today. What we're going to do, be doing is sending you the access codes that will allow you to enter and modify the basic environmental controls on your shuttle that will be important for you to successfully lift off the planet and uh, make it back out into interplanetary space. Now, in order to do that, we want to make sure that your efforts to control and to modify the systems on your shuttle are not going to be interfered with by hostile interference. So in order to do that, we're going to need to communicate this information to you in a secure way. Now, we've been able to encode the information that you'll need into some hero code that will display for you on your seven segment displays. But we can't simply tell you what it is because if we do so, there may be someone eavesdropping on our conversation. So we've elected to send you the hero code that you will need to access the necessary information in an encrypted form. And what you'll see on your screen right now is what looks like gibberish because it's the hero code, but it has been encrypted. Now, the encryption technique that's used here is a relatively simple one. And we're gonna spend a little bit of time today talking a bit about the encryption that's used and how you can go about decrypting this in order to be able to run the code and get the necessary access information. As you might guess from looking at the code on your screen, there's some familiar looking patterns here. It looks as though the letters have been scrambled or substituted. And in fact, that's exactly what we have here is a simple substitution cipher. There are a lot of different ways in which you can construct a substitution cipher. It might depend upon you having access to a decrypting key. Now, in this case, we've chosen a cipher which actually has a very long history to it, a, lot, a very long history in its use. This is known as the Caesar cipher. Although if you're familiar with uh, 20th century and earlier technology, you may be aware that uh, even before computers, ciphers and encryption were necessary in order to carry out secure communications. In fact, going back much farther, all the way back to the Roman Empire, written communications sometimes needed to be encoded in order to be transmitted without being intercepted by hostile forces. So that's the origin behind the Caesar cipher. And if you have access to some historical information, you may be able to actually look up more on the Caesar cipher. But I can explain to you in a relatively uh, short explanation how it works. In a Caesar cipher, the alphabet, that is the sequence of letters A, B, C, D, and so on, are offset by a specific number of positions. So for example, if I offset the alphabet by an offset of two, then A would shift to C, and B would shift to D, and so on. So you can see how such a, a cipher might work. And you might also see that it wouldn't be a very hard code to break because if you had unlimited time, it would be a very simple matter to simply try all possible offsets until you came upon 
a legible, an intelligible message. Of course, this it helps if you know something about the content of the message. And we're counting on your familiarity with hero code to be able to recognize when this is properly decoded. In fact, if we look at the code a little bit, we'll recognize that there are some structures here that are pretty obviously corresponding to our normal setup and loop routines. And we'll probably give you a good head start on being able to decode and decrypt the full message. We're hoping that your familiarity with this information and with these structures will give you a head start on whoever the hostile forces are that are trying to intercept your message. So although this is not a very difficult to break or very sophisticated cipher, it should give you enough time to get in first and to uh, unlock the environmental controls on your shuttle and make the necessary modifications to ensure your success. Before we talk further about this particular code and what uh, you're going to find when you uh, decrypt it and run it, we'll just add a few additional comments on the subject of encryption and security in case you find it necessary during your subsequent work to implement even more stringent security measures. You may be aware that uh, in the 20 and 21st centuries, the expansion of computer information and the sharing of computer information led to severe challenges in the implementation of uh, secure and uh, hacker resistant technologies. And you might also be aware that there are much more solid, much more secure ways of encryption than just a simple substitution cipher like the one that we uh, have described here. As we mentioned, it'd be pretty easy to crack this simply by brute force, trying all the possible offsets. Other possible ways that you could think of to encrypt text could involve using random numbers. You could envision a random number known only to the people who were sending the message and the ones who were receiving the message that would allow you to construct a complicated and difficult or impossible to guess decoding key. Such an idea is one that uh, has a good deal of promise to it. On the other hand, it's not completely free of security risks because after all, uh, once the key is distributed to the parties involved, there's always the chance that that key might be leaked. It might be intercepted somehow in the process of transferring it between parties. And if the key is compromised, then there's uh, no assurance of security anymore. Further investigation into cryptography uh, might lead you to uh, learn about some additional measures that uh, you might want to learn about and see if they're applicable. For example, one of the very popular schemes for secure communication involves not just a single random number key, but a pair of keys. This is a so-called public and private key encryption technique. The details I'll leave for you to uh, learn about on your own. But the basic idea is this. Each user of such a secure system will have not one, but two keys. One of those keys is shared publicly with whoever you might want to communicate with. And the other key, the private key, is kept secret. It's not shared with anyone. And so as a result, it should be immune to being intercepted or stolen by a hostile party. The idea, without going into the details here, is that you would share your public key with anyone you wanted to allow to send you an encrypted message. 
they would use the encryption algorithm with that public key to construct a message that was encrypted. Now, the way the algorithm works is that although anyone can construct an encrypted message to send to you using that public key, no one can decode that message unless they also know your private key, and that would be you. So this should provide a means for someone to send you an encrypted message that you and you alone can read. And the same would, of course, work in the reverse direction because you could respond to the person sending you a message with encryption as well by using their public key. And only they could read it using that public key and their own private key. So this is just one of the possible examples in which, um, or one of the ways in which we could enhance the security in our very simple system that we have here today. Without going further into that, however, why don't we take a little look at what the job is that you have to take care of today and uh, give you a couple of things to watch out for as you are reconstructing the code and running it. As I mentioned before, you'll want to use the same display, four-digit, seven-segment display code that you constructed during our last session together. Now, I want to give you a little heads up on something, and that is we didn't want to make this too easy for someone to intercept and uh, decode before you did. And so you should not assume anything going in about the identities of the uh, pin numbers that are used on the, the hero board. So although the general techniques that are used are the same as in our last session, the uh, pin numbers may be different. And so you should be carefully examining the code as you decrypt it to understand how to configure your hardware in order to properly display the numbers that uh, you need to learn. As I mentioned before, you should probably be able to fairly quickly understand the structure of this code with the setup and loop functions. And uh, while the uh, display routines that we've been using will be generally familiar to you, there are some comments in this code that will show you some of the additional options that we haven't used before. And uh, you may, in fact, want to play around with those options a little bit to modify the way in which information is displayed on your display. One note that is fairly important for you to be aware of here, the Caesar cipher, which we've used to encode here, only substitutes letters, A, B, C through Z, but it does not substitute numbers, at least not in its basic form. This is a bit of a problem for us because it means that if we were to embed numbers into our code here that would possibly be intercepted by a hostile group, they'd be able to see those numbers unencrypted. And it might give them an extra advantage in being able to uh, learn the secure information that we're trying to send to you. So as you examine this code and as you understand it and run it, please be alert to the fact that we have intentionally avoided putting numbers into the code that might give away the information that we're trying to send you. I don't think that you'll find it too difficult to decipher that, but be alert for that. So uh, those are the basic things to be looking out for. If you are successful in decoding and running this code, 
your display will give you the information necessary to access your environmental control system. And so we will be back to talk to you next time after you've gained access to those systems. But for now, we wish you luck in getting this uh, information decoded. And as always, we uh, encourage you to build everything and invent safe.